If you want to learn how to write songs and become a songwriter, something important to learn to do is to listen to other songs no longer as a consumer, but as somebody who's trying to learn from other songwriters and specifically from songs and songwriters that you enjoy. So I wanted to start this series about things we could learn about songwriting from different artists. So who better to start with than my favorite artist, Vertical Horizon. The first thing that Vertical Horizon taught me about songwriting is that growing as an instrumentalist can help make you a better songwriter. Now to a lot of you this may sound obvious, but for every one of you there's somebody who will ask me questions like, ah, do I really need to learn an instrument to write songs? Do I really need to practice my instrument? I only want to learn enough guitar to write songs. Certainly you can learn to write songs without knowing any instrument, but it's going to get way easier and you're going to be way less limited as a songwriter if you do learn an instrument and the better you get at an instrument. So Vertical Horizon is the only band that I'm aware of where the lead singer and the lead songwriter is also the lead guitarist. And very often in bands, the lead singer is going to be actually the weakest instrumentalist. When you think of the epitome of a rock band, isn't it sort of there's one or two electric guitarists, there's a bass guitarist, there's a drummer, there may be a keyboard or piano player, and then there's a lead singer who half the time doesn't even play an instrument, and then once in a while they'll pick up an acoustic guitar but they never really do anything particularly impressive with the instrument because the better instrumentalists are the other lead guitars. And it makes sense because they are, after all, the lead singer, not the lead guitarist. So how does Matt Scannell being a legitimately great guitarist help in Vertical Horizon songwriting? Well, it means he's just less limited and he can come up with more interesting guitar hooks and riffs that are a core part of the song because he's able to sing and play more advanced things very easily. Easily. Now, this isn't to say that most of Vertical Horizon's guitar parts are super intricate and complicated, but they are more complicated than your average sort of strummed acoustic guitar chords, G major, C major, D major. A great example of this is the song, When You Cry. <laughs> particularly advanced riff. In fact, if you're even an intermediate guitarist, you can learn it pretty easily, but it's the type of riff that you probably wouldn't come up with if you are mostly just a singer. Or another example of this would be the song We Are, which has, again, a pretty interesting little guitar riff. Sing a listen to the window Sing a lover on the radio Ask her if she got an and even with their biggest hit, Everything You Want, on the surface you may think, oh, that's just strummed acoustic guitar chords and a lead guitar riff. When you listen more carefully, you'll notice that there's a lot of hammer-ons inside of that acoustic guitar riff where it actually sort of has its own little melody. It's actually kind of an interesting little acoustic guitar part. Somewhere they're speaking, it's already coming in. And again, it's not a super complicated part or particularly hard to play. Keep in mind that the hardest thing you can play is probably not something that you could actually write. Because usually when we write, our writing is based on improvisation, and we can't improvise at the same level that we can play. Because with playing a specific song, we can practice that part over and over and over until we get it right. But when you're just improvising, when you're messing around and trying to discover something while you're writing, you are not going to improvise at the level that you can get to when you practice something over and over again that somebody else already wrote. And certainly you're not gonna be able to come up with interesting parts that you can play while you are singing unless you level up your instrument skill. And I can already hear the pushback, which is I can write perfectly good songs without that. Or here's some random artist that writes really good songs and they don't play any instrument. Yes, 
Of course that exists. That's not the question though. The question is, are you more limited in your songwriting when you are less good as an instrumentalist? And the answer is clearly yes. Of course you're more limited if you are not as good a guitarist or pianist. Whatever songwriter you have in your head that's like, oh, they're really good and they don't play an instrument. If they did play an instrument, they would almost certainly be even better, which is really what we're talking about here. You will certainly get better as a songwriter if you work on your instrument skill. Another thing I learned about songwriting from Vertical Horizon is the power of a chord progression hook hybrid. I think a lot of us tend to think of chord progressions and hooks as two different things. There's the lead singer, they're holding the acoustic guitar, playing the chord progression, and then the lead guitarist is doing a hook. And in a lot of songs, this is very true. But whoever said it has to be that way. We can actually have the main guitar part or the main piano part or whatever instrument it is be a chord progression and a hook at the same time. And there are different ways to do this. We can have what everything you want does, which is essentially a chord progression that contains a hook within it because it is basically a chord progression, but the way he utilizes hammer-ons and things ends up making it have its own sort of melody, which operates as a hook for the song. We also can just ignore having a clear chord progression at all and really just have our whole song built on a riff instead. An example of this would be a song we've also already mentioned, which is When You Cry. That first riff is not really a chord progression most of the time. It's just a guitar riff. <laughs> chords that are actually happening there are actually a little bit vague because whoever said you had to have a straightforward clear chord progression. And then finally you can have a chord progression that truly is a progression of chords that also just straight up is a hook. A great example of this would be the song Sunshine which in the chorus Girl, I see you You see me too Close your eyes and meet me in the sunshine on through, I will find you, close your eyes and meet me in the sunshine. That is a chord progression of power chords, but also it is clearly a hook because it sounds very melodic. And it certainly is very far from one measure of G, one measure of D. No, instead it clearly is something that is driven by the hook. It happens to leverage power chords, but it's more a hook than it is a chord progression, even though it literally is a chord progression as well. And look, some songs, maybe even a lot of songs fit having a traditional basic strummed chord progression where we have one one measure of G and two measures of D and then one measure of C major. There's nothing wrong with that, but we don't want to be limited to all of our songs just being that over and over again because there's way more to songwriting than just let's come up with a basic chord progression and then let's come up with a melody on top of it. That's a great place to start as songwriters, but we don't want to be limited to that forever, do we? Because that's going to start to get boring. So if right now you feel like you're just beginning with guitar or piano and you don't feel like you're ready to come up with riffs yet and really you you do need to stick with basic chord progressions, that's totally fine, right from where you're at. But be sure to learn more about your instrument and get better at your instrument over time and consider integrating some of these things into your songs. And another thing I learned about songwriting from Vertical Horizon is the power of symbolic feeling detail. So often when we think about detail and being more detailed, we think about story details and literal details. I met you at the coffee shop on the corner of 9th and 8th, but there are other ways to provide detail. For instance, Vertical Horizon very often will actually use symbolism to give detail and it will be detail about what he's feeling and how he's feeling rather than literal story details. So when listening to a Vertical Horizon song, probably even his best friends would have no idea if the song is about a woman, which woman it was about. They'd be like, is this about your last ex or is this about the girl you dated when you were 20? They would have no idea because there aren't story details. There are just details about how he's feeling. So I think a pretty good example of this is the song Frost. In the second verse, it says soft, tender like a symphony, tearing out the rest of me frame by frame. Late, better now than never, trailing off together into flame. Love somehow we misplaced its 
somewhere in the basement down below. I tried to get it better, tried to stay together, but we go. And I don't mind, I'm just fine. So early in that verse, we have what I would consider details, but they're not details about what actually happened in the story. We know nothing about the presumed breakup or divorce or whatever it might be about, but we do know very specifically how he's feeling. So you could look at the first two lines as if they are basically saying that it's tearing me apart. The difference is that it's tearing me apart is now a almost meaningless phrase because it's just so overused. It's been used a million times. Now, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with ever using it, but it's just not a very profound way to say that anymore. But this is way more specific, even though it's completely metaphorical because he's explaining how soft, tender like a symphony, it's tearing out the rest of me frame by frame, piece by piece, it's tearing me apart, but it's soft and tender like a symphony. It's not being bashed over the head with pain. Instead, it's something that is a little bit more bit by bit, and it's sort of softly happening. That's very, very specific, even though it doesn't tell us anything at all about the story, because there are other details we can dive into besides story details. We can get more detailed about how we're actually feeling, how we're responding to what's going on around us. Another example of this would be carrying on's first verse, which says the waves on the shore can't be ignored. Soon they're all around you. The cavalry's failed. They're all gone, but you're holding on. Somehow it's not what you asked for. So here the waves on the shore and the cavalry that's gone isn't actually literal. It's not real, but it's utilizing this as metaphor for how the person is feeling and therefore gets way more detailed about how they're feeling, where the waves are behind them and it's getting harder and harder to ignore. The cavalry that was going to be their last defense is all gone. So now you're surrounded wondering, how did I get here? This isn't what I asked for. And the beauty of metaphor over just saying it in basic prose is often with metaphor, you're effectively painting a picture with your words. And if pictures are roughly worth a thousand words, then when we use a few words to paint a picture, we effectively get a huge return on our investment of words because we use say 10 words to draw a picture that's worth a thousand words. So don't feel like the only details you can get into are literal story details, because you can also have non-literal details where you utilize something like symbolism, imagery, any type of metaphor, and you also don't have to give details that are story-driven. You can give idea-driven details, or you can give details that are more about how you are feeling or how somebody else is feeling or responding to the story that's happening. And sometimes we don't talk about this, but honestly, some songs don't really have a story per se. They just have a central idea and they're more about communicating how you are responding to what's happening to you than the facts of what are actually happening to you. So because Vertical Horizon is my favorite band, the hard part of this video was narrowing it down to three things, but hopefully this was helpful to you and inspires you to go out and listen to some of your favorite artists with a more critical ear. Try to learn what is it about this artist that I really like that I want to borrow in my own songwriting? What can I learn from other songwriters? And also be sure to grab my free guide on 10 different ways to start writing a song so you can start writing a song right now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one.